In an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents a voice of truth, inspiration, and a conversation that matters. Live from Los Angeles, we are broadcasting on frequencies of love, laughter, and information, and making moments by illuminating new paths to a better way of being as we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a greater understanding of ourselves and the world in which we live. This is radio like you've never felt before. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with tonight's special guest, who is an entrepreneur, author, philanthropist, educator, international speaker, licensed CPA, and mother, Sharon Lecter. And now your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Thank you. Ciao, everyone. This is uh, an exciting show because... We have uh, Sharon Lecter, as uh, as Mark mentioned, and it's interesting because she she is all of that 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 Mark mentioned, and it's interesting how I, I love how it's listed the way it is, um, and and that Mark read it out in, interestingly enough because we didn't really talk about it that that she has that she recognizes that she's more than uh, just just an author and she's more than just a person who is is out there um, uh, promoting this book or writing, you know, or, or, or speaking or whatever. She's she's also a CPA, which I don't think she's practicing anymore, but that's that's part of her. That's part of her makeup. She's a mother. That's part of her makeup. And when she speaks, she talks about that. And I think it's exciting because. I think what the world needs is, is more people that recognize that they are many things, not just one thing, and that at all times, all of those programs are running at the same time, uh, and, and that we are whole beings, not just I'm not just your boss right now or, or your employee right now. I, I'm I'm still a mother or a father or, or a son or or an uncle or or, or a, a businessman or 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 a gardener, whatever it is. I'm still all of that. And and I think the more we show up as a whole, instead of compartmentalizing, are you this and are you this? Um, I, I think uh, we, we're better. We're all better off. And it's interesting because I wanted to share how uh, recently a friend of mine showed me a photograph that he took in a mine in uh, in uh, in Europe, and. As I was looking at the photograph, I said, you know, I really can't see. Very much. Um, I mean, I'm sure it was a nice mine, but there's really nothing here for me to see. And he says, no, it was incredible. I wish I could show you. And then he said, oh, wait, hold on a second. And he ran the, the photograph somehow through a software program. And all of a sudden, it was as if somebody turned the light on in the mine. And I could see detail in the mine. And it was beautiful, just like he had told me. And he said, isn't it interesting how the camera captured all the information that was there, but we just weren't able to see what the camera captured until we ran it through this program? And I thought that was fascinating. I had never seen anything like that. And and to think that, that when he snapped that picture, that all he snapped was a black image, but that you know, months later, he could run it through a program, and then we could see all this beauty inside this mine. It was was incredible. Um, And so I thought about that recently, when a friend of mine brought, another friend, brought up a conversation, or should I say, an argument, that he and I had had many, many, many years ago. And it's interesting that for some reason this argument just wouldn't die. We it was literally almost two decades ago we had an argument, and it, we, this the hurt, the damage from this argument has has uh, been in our friendship without either one of us knowing for all these years. And and years later, a decade or so later, he brought it up, or maybe I brought it up, and we argued about it again, and then. Uh, you know, years after that, one of us brought it up and we argued about it again. And then finally, this year, a few months back, this friend brought up the argument again. And I said to this friend, I said, what you were going through at the time was this, 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 and this. And what you were really trying to tell me was this, this, and this. 
And what really would have been helpful to you was if I would have been able to hear that, understand that, and say this, this, and this. And what might have been helpful for me if you would have been able to say this, this, and that. And I stopped. And then I added, and I'm sorry, I wasn't able to do that at the time. And this friend had tears in his eyes. And he says, how could you possibly do that now? And I remembered the incident with the photograph and the other friend who had run the picture through a a software program that was able to shed light on information that was always there. And I said to this friend, I said, you know, and I gave him the analogy of the photograph. I said, somehow my subconscious captured all the information that was available to me of what you really might have been saying or what you really might have been feeling or what I really could be saying or what I really was feeling. All that information was captured. But I didn't have the program to run that conversation through in order to shed the light on what was really there. And so all I saw was darkness. And so I reacted to the darkness. And now, through all the work that I've done and through all the lessons that I've learned and and what I've helped other people do, I could go back, or maybe there is no back, maybe there is no time and space, maybe that conversation is as real to me today as it was then, only now, with this new program or series of programs, I can shed light on that conversation that we had, and I can see where you were and where I was, and I can say I'm sorry. And so with that story, um, I think maybe in some of the misunderstandings that I have today or that we all have every single day, I'm sure, that just maybe that we don't have to hurt for a couple decades and that maybe if we don't have the software program in our minds or consciousness to run that picture through or that conversation through in order to shed light on it just yet, maybe we can just suspend our disbelief or suspend the argument and say, you know, there might be something here I just can't see right now or I just can't see yet. And maybe someday... I will be able to see it. But until then, let's just leave it for what it is. And maybe it doesn't have to hurt so hard. So with that, we're going to be talking to Sharon today about outwitting the devil. And I wonder if the devil, as um, we talked to Sharon, if, if there was a devil in that conversation two decades ago, And maybe with this software program, we were able to outwit it and life just got better. So as soon as we come back, we're going to talk to Sharon about how we can outwit the devils in our conversations, in our lives, and in our world uh, right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb, and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, we're back, and this is really exciting because 
Wow, we hear about the devil in so many uh, different experiences of our life, and and this book that Sharon has uh, just authored or has just put out, and she'll tell us more about it, uh, is called Outwitting the Devil, and, and so wouldn't we like to do that? So Sharon is an entrepreneur, an author, actually, I should say, an internationally best-selling author, a philanthropist, an educator, an international speaker, and as Mark said, a licensed CPA and a mother, and actually so much more. She's a friend, and she's... Um, She's so much more, and 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 that's what I, I like about us uh, bringing her on and, and, and talking about this because she has she has um, uh, uh, founded Pay Your Family First, a financial education organization, uh, and and youthpreneur, an innovative way to spark the entrepreneurial spirit in our children. She has also, uh, as as you all know, authored Think and Grow Rich. Three Feet from Gold in cooperation with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and with Greg Reed. And she also has co-authored the international best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So, and the Rich Dad series of books, of course. So there, there is so much that Sharon does. And today she is going to help us out with the devil. Sharon, welcome to Life Changes with Filippo. I am delighted to be here, Filippo. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're delighted to have you. And you know, something I talk about, you are so much, I, I've met you a couple times. And the last time I saw you was actually the eve of my birthday. And as soon as you found that out, you came over and gave me this big motherly hug and said, happy birthday. And it was the first happy birthday uh, greeting that I had gotten yet. So I thank you for being like that. <laughs> well, happy birthday. I hope you had a fabulous day. <laughs> I did. I did. Now, uh, I shared a story at the beginning, and then during the break, you and I chatted, and you said, Filippo, that's exactly right. What did you mean? Where, where were you headed in your mind with that? Well, Outwitting the Devil, as you so kindly introduced, was actually originally written by Napoleon Hill in 1938, and it was just the year after he published the blockbuster Think and Grow Rich. And so we all know that Think and Grow Rich really outlines the principles of success, but he was really frustrated with the fact that many people would read it and not take control of their lives. And so he sat down the very next year and wrote Outwitting the Devil, which really he goes into those kinds of things that keep us from reaching our success, those self-limiting beliefs, those things that happen between you and your friend that were inside of you that you couldn't get past to try and find the peace and the friendship again. And so it's so very important for us to really be able to look at ourselves and say, what is it that's holding us back? The fear, Mm -hmm. procrastination, greed, envy, ego, and how we can identify them, figure out where they came from. And once we can do that, we can get rid of them and blast through them to reach the success we deserve. (laughs) <laughs> I like that. Is it easier said than done, or does the book really make it easy? It's, of course, easier said than done, but the book is um, is entertaining. It's a little in-your-face. It's a little controversial. It's a little profound. But at the end of the day, you're going to feel th- something change inside of you because the, re- the revelations. Napoleon Hill starts by sharing his own issues that many of us weren't aware of. You think of him as this great philosopher, and there he had many, many deep, dark moments in his life where he felt like a failure. He didn't know which way to go, and he says, you know, here I am. I feel like a fraud. I'm supposed to be this, write this book on success and I can't even buy my children a Christmas tree. Mm. So by sh- by sharing those things, how he pulled himself up by his bootstraps and reached the pinnacle of success again, only to find another failure along the way. So he talks about the fact that his, his pathway to success was not a straight line. It was a zigzag. Success, then failure. Success, then failure. And the issue was he learned along the way. And so the, 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 the thing for all of us to understand is to relate to him. And then he goes into this epiphany one night where he has a conversation with the devil. And he leaves it up to you as the reader. Is this the real devil or is this an imaginary devil? And it could be very well be that those inner voices inside of you that says easy for them to say, you can't do it, to you're not worthy, you're not good enough. And how you can identify maybe where those things came from as a young child. And once you can identify them, you can deal with them. 
You know, Sharon, I, I can't help but uh, say the book that you co-authored, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I, I know has helped a lot of people. But I, I have to ask, when you look at that in the eyes of this new book, would you say there was a devil in what one of the dads or one of the the teachings or some of you know some of them? Well, I think what happens when we um, are we live a life of scarcity and not abundance, we allow ourselves to be fearful. And so we all have to deal with fear in our lives. Um, we all de- deal with setbacks. So the issue is definiteness of purpose. And in Outwitting the Devil, um, Napoleon Hill lays out the seven steps to be able to outwit the devil in your lives. And so you can point there. We all probably have those negative issues in our lives that we have to deal with. And it could be the devil derailing you and trying to get you to go in the wrong direction but it's also where you're where are you learning your information from and are you learning from it through the eyes of scarcity or are you learning through the ideas of abundance and adding value to the world and i think that's the bottom line message of everything napoleon hill writes is that we need to create value think and grow rich helped us get out of the great depression and outwitting the devil even though it was written then i think truly was meant for today because today we need a stronger message to kick us in the pants and say wake up start adding value creating positive thoughts and working towards adding value and helping one another to get out of this mess you know sharon i I, i've heard you speak and i i liked how you talked about how you wondered if the message would be appropriate today as it was how many years ago 70 or so Yep, over 73 years ago when it was first written. And and so do, do you have at your fingertips some of the things that, that you mentioned during one of your lectures where you were saying how 73 or so years ago uh, this was happening in the world and, oh, look, so it's happening now. Absolutely. If you think back during 1938 was during the Great Depression, certainly we're upside down economically now. Back then we were fighting a war today. We're in the middle of a war. Back then we had high unemployment. Today our unemployment is high at 10%, clo- closing in on 10%. And back, you know, when I originally looked at it, I thought, well, you know, the cost of living was so much lower then. How can this relate? But when you really look at the, the, the fear factors that were in, in inside people's hearts back then. It's the same as what's happening to people now. People are feeling disenfranchised. They're feeling hopelessness. And we have to turn that tide through being able to create value. And the way we got out of the Great Depression was through entrepreneurship and people t- starting small businesses and adding value. And that's exactly what we need to do today. But just two weeks ago, there was a report that said entrepreneurship, new, new business startups are the lowest it's been in a long time. And that's really disappointing. We need to be able to get out there and add value and start um, creating new businesses so that we can spur the economy in the right direction. Mm. You know, on the one hand, it is actually so great. Well, you, you uh, talked a little bit about during your lecture how you've had your, your zigzag in, in life, and, and, and now you're sharing with us about uh, Napoleon Hill's zigzag in life and, 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 and the fact that he felt like a fraud because he he was teaching this and yet he he didn't own them 100%. And I have to I have to with everybody that that I've had the privilege to know and meet and and interview and all that um I don't know anybody's that hasn't had a zigzag life. So on the one hand you say okay well my life is zigzagging that's just the way life is supposed to be but on the other hand one could say well if I'm going to be zigzagging the rest of my life what's the use? Well, that's a great comment and a great question, and and that goes to something that Napoleon Hill brings up in Outwitting the Devil about drifting versus non-drifting. And when you have a definite purpose, you know your end goal. And so what happens is is if you do start drifting away from your purpose, at least you know how to correct. You know which way to take your, if you're a sailor, you know that you don't, you seldom go a straight line. You go back and forth. Good point. it's very important that we understand that um, we all do have negative thoughts. We all have negative things happen to us. But the issue is, do we correct quickly? 
Do we look and learn from those mistakes, and do we go back to what our intended purpose and our ultimate goal is? In as a drifter, Napoleon Hill, you you know, he talks about a drifter is someone who just is easily swayed, has no definite purpose, just aimlessly goes through life. Is their opinions, you know, they take whatever the popular opinion is of the moment, and they don't really add value, and they don't put a stake in the ground and say, "This is who I am, this is what I want to accomplish," and let's go and that's what a non-drifter does a non-drifter keeps their focus on where they want to be and even though they may have setbacks they keep going i like that (laughs) and you know it reminds me of the story that i told at the beginning of the show because um now as i approach after that experience as i approach different situations that seem awfully negative and seem awfully wrong i say to myself there might be something here that i'm not seeing and at this point of the game more often than not i i find the thing which ends up being a positive thing that i never would have gotten unless the negative thing happened and as Napoleon Hill said, out of every adversity comes the seed of a greater benefit. And the question is, how fast can we identify it, learn from the adversity, learn from the mistake, and keep moving in the direction that we're intended to go? Hmm. Was, I think, I'm trying to remember, you said something about that it, because it was written 70-something years ago, that that women were not uh, uh, what was the issue around what he, how he wrote about women wasn't there an issue around that well in 1938 you know women were not very much in the workplace and it was a very chauvinistic time so the the book was written in the through the eyes of a man and he talked about um a man had his ego and a woman had her vanity and that's i think what i talked about that night is the fact that today i would say we both have equal measures of ego <laughs> and vanity to deal with so but th- i think that was um, the one of the opportunities i had be, by becoming involved in this is to actually look at this and say how can we make this relevant for today and in particularly um it's su- such a strong message for women as well because so many women defer what they truly want themselves for others and we need to really make sure that we take care of ourselves first because if we can become powerful in our own rights then we can be more effective in other roles Mm. now i don't know what this has to do um with the with in the whole scheme of things but i found the story very interesting when you shared that uh, he asked the devil, um, his whatever his conscious or his the real devil or whatever it is. He asked that um, uh, a, a, the devil uh, why the devil wasn't afraid that this information would come out because then we would know how to outwit the devil. And the devil said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> well, it really is a spine tingling section of the book. And it oh, really, it, as I shared with, with the group, when I first got it, it was literally a typewritten manuscript. And as I'm turning the pages, I get to this section. And he says, you know, aren't you imagine the devil's on a witness stand. And so the, the interrogator is saying, aren't you worried? I'm going to give away all your secrets and you're going to lose control of all these souls. And the devil's response is, I'm not worried at all because you're going to be too afraid to publish the manuscript. And here we are mm. 73 years later. And that's exactly what happened. There were always elements of fear um, thinking that it would be too provocative at that time. His wife worked for the Methodist Church, and she said, oh, I'm not sure that we want to have this kind of controversy. And I really believe it was meant to be because Think and Grow Rich was so strong, and it needed a voice of its own, and it really helped turn us around. And today we have the, the presence and the value and the proven success of those people who followed Think and Grow Rich and then those who tried and failed can find their peace and find maybe the way that they can correct now by reading Outwitting the Devil. Hmm. Well, Outwitting the Devil is the name of the book and Sharon Lecter is our guest today and uh, we are having a a great time with this because at least I am because it, it some of this what she's talking about seems so um it it's so out there um and and some of it is just so obvious and and so it's just it, it's just 
bringing it home. I mean, Sharon, how, how would you put it? It's bringing well, it into I, your awareness or? I will tell you that the, the most rewarding thing for me is to see the reviews that have come in on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and the comments people talk, you know, you life changing is incredible. Obviously great for your radio show. <laughs> they say life changing. They say, I feel like the book was written just for me. One, one comment was, um, this book is going to create seismic shifts in positive outcomes. Now, mm. how better than that? Um, <laughs> other, other book reviews are saying that this is um, truly a math. While well, Think and Grow Rich showed Napoleon Hill's um, brilliance, Outwitting the Devil shows his genius and his prophecy. You know, because even in this book, he talks about back in 1938, the the fact that he uses the devil used cigarettes to start young people on on the path of drifting and keeping them from becoming the success they so deserve and that was a time when cigarettes were very popular we were giving them away to our servicemen we didn't know they were they were deadly and that they were bad for you until the 60s and yet he he was professing this back in 1938 mm Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, interesting indeed. And uh, if you want to learn more about Sharon and, of course, the book, uh, you can go to share. Well, actually, s lecter dot com. S as in Sam. L e c h t e r dot com. Now we're going to talk a little bit about pay your family first, but you can also go to payyourfamilyfirst dot com and three feet away dot com, where you can learn about the three feet from gold book. So uh, with that, we're going to take a quick break here, and then when we come back, we're going to ask Sharon like to give us one or two of the the practical uh, things that we can take away from this book, and also talk a little bit about some of our other projects as soon as we come back. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. We are back. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and our guest today is Sharon Lecter, who you all know as an internationally best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but also Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold, in cooperation with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, and actually also in cooperation with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, this brand new book, Outwitting the Devil, that just came out in June, that is available if you go to slecter.com, and so that's S as in Sam, L-E-C-H-T-E-R dot com. So before the break, we talked about the book Outwitting the Devil with Sharon. And um, Sharon, you said that there were seven principles of outwitting the devil, of which I, I, I like them all. You talked a little bit about definitiveness of purpose, which was one of them. And then we actually talked a little bit about learning from adversity, which is another. But the one, the one that I'm still having... Uh, let's see. Personal issue is mastering uh, mastery over self. How can you? How? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, mastery, mastery over self, you know, we, we don't like the word self-discipline, but it really what? is. It, you know, it's, for, it's the, the comment uh, for things to change, you must change. Um, we talk about the definition of insanity being doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So part of this is recognizing what your goals are and understanding that sometimes you need to change what you're doing in order to change and may have more positive results. And that mastery over self, what and all of these are kind of interrelated in the fact that when you have mastery over yourself, you are learning from your adversity and you are controlling your environment. That's how all of these go hand in hand. If you can control your environment, it makes your life easier because if you surround yourself with people that want to support you and help you be successful, it's a lot easier than if you're surrounding yourself with people that are negative and want to hold you back. And then harmony is really the one that brings it all together because what happens is it's so hard that first step, you know, that first kick in the pants to get off your duff and do something positive. But then the next time it's a little easier because you're going to build up your self-confidence. And so it's once one time after the other, building that self-confidence to the point where it becomes harmonic. It becomes is even beyond a habit because it's just become second nature that you know you're going to get up and you're going to do certain things that day to help propel yourself to success. So it's that initial inertia that you have to get over, and that's that mastery over self to know that once you do it the first time, it'll be slightly easier the second, and then it will just be second nature. (laughs) <laughs> I, I like that. You know, Harmony, I wish I would have remembered that when I was talking to a friend this weekend who, who said, you know, I think I could make it here and I, uh, um, it might be a struggle and this and that and this and that. And uh, though I have to be away from my family and all. And, and, and really what I, what I really was trying to say maybe is Harmony is how does, how does this, you know, how does this situation relate to the, the harmony of, of what your life is supposed to be or, or the beauty of, of how you want to express yourself, leaving your family and, and making it here. And if that's what you really feel you're supposed to do, then by all means do. But in the meantime, some of the stuff has a price unless the pri- uh, unless we are in harmony with, with our mission and our hearts. Right, Sharon? Oh, absolutely. And, and what's so difficult for someone, if you, if you have someone close to you who isn't on track, who is, is zigging instead of zagging, and they're um, you know, completely off track of a pathway to success, and they're lost, and they're sitting on the fence, unable to move, or they're depressed, or they're, um, you know, they're, they have addictive personality in negative ways, it's so difficult to watch a friend or a family member who's in that state. And I think one of the things is that this book brought peace to me, and I think to many people, is to understanding that you know we you have to take care of yourself and hopefully give them the tools that they can choose better and that they can put their lives back on track. And it may very well be that this is the perfect gift to to give to someone who's stuck and not knowing where they want to go. Because if you, as a friend or as a um, a family member, talk to them, they probably won't hear you because it's a familiar voice probably singing a familiar song. So they might need that message delivered in a little bit different pathway. Mm. Well, you know, Sharon, um, one of the things I really like about you is, is not only do you do a lot of different things, that you put out there a lot of different things. And I, I know that as, as far as quote unquote success is supposed to be, according to some, is you're only supposed to do one thing or you have to focus over here. And, and I see you as very successful, as does the world. And I know you have been and, and are, and yet you have all these different things going and you, and you, you bring your interests out. So I, you, for example, you, you, uh, you are part of the Women's President's uh, Organization, the, the President's Advisory Council on Financial Literacy. Uh, you've created a board game called Thrive Time for Teens. Uh, you have all these uh, things going. So uh, I, in, the, in the few minutes that we have remaining, <laughs> which, where, do we, where do we touch first? Well, I think if it, the bottom line is all of those are distribution opportunities and 
organizations that promote and foster entrepreneurship and in in financial education. So Napoleon Hill, if you think of that as the outwitting the devil as my umbrella at this point, within that book, we talk about the importance of experiential education. My board game Thrive Time that you just talked about, Thrive Time for Teens, we're just finishing Thrive Time for Adults, is an experiential way to educate our young people, not only about financial matters, but that is important is just as important how how they um, use their time, manage their time as it is manage their money, and that their choices are going to determine where they thrive or dive into debt in a fun and a humorous way. So that that element is very important. Then we also have a product called the Biz Kit that helps young people set up and start managing their own companies, their own businesses. And so all of these elements work together. Of course, women entrepreneurs um, are the ones who are members of Women Presence Organization. And being able to provide cost-effective tools that are experiential in nature that help people grab control of their financial life. Many of us, we know we can't control the world economy we might not be able to control our even our city's economy we, we can control what's happening in our own wallet and sometimes we just need a hand up not a handout and so all of these products and these organizations that i work with are are serving that role of supporting individuals in finding their own pathway to success and it's through experiential learning tools that we can create that the thrive time for all my um, information and the tools that we've created for women we have a money for women by women we have the thrive time game we have a um a ubs stick that is a um whole eight thousand dollar coaching program for a hundred bucks called it's your turn to thrive where mm-hmm. you can actually get hands-on um, advice from people who are successful in multiple fields that can help give you the ideas that maybe you can employ in your own life to find your pathway to success. And my mission is to create and pull all this information together and make it as inexpensive as possible. I'm not trying to sell an $8,000 coaching program, a $3,000 coaching program. Everything we offer at this point is under $100 and is intended so that people can grab control of their own life and improve it. Uh, that could be maybe why in October 2009 you received the Humanitarian Award from the Caring Institute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It was a huge honor. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting because uh, that really struck me. Of course, that life changes. Uh, that's the, obviously we care. If if and, and it's interesting because you know you've come up with all these uh, ideas and i and i have to believe it's because you care and i I've, I've i've seen and and learned uh that if we don't care about something we don't delve into it and figure out the problems so uh, and and how to how to get past them so sometimes it's it's through the people that we care about that we experience some of our biggest difficulties because if we didn't care we wouldn't we wouldn't care to learn or figure it out that's absolutely true. It's your passion, and we talk about in Three Feet from Gold, your personal success equation, and that's taking your passion and combining it with your talent, finding the right association, taking the right action, and above all, having faith in yourself. And one of the things that I point out is, you know, most people, when you read about passion, that says it's, passion is do what you love, love what you do. And passion can also come from something that makes you angry. For me, it's a lack of financial education and training mm-hmm. in our schools. And so my my life's work and my life's mission came from being frustrated at the fact that we're not teaching young people about money. And financial education is the gift of a lifetime. And, for instance, our board game Thrive Time is only $29. And um, I, I, you know, I challenge every parent, every aunt and uncle, every adult listening to this: is is it too much to spend thirty dollars to give a child the gift of a lifetime? And that's called financial education. It wasn't created to make a profit; it was created to make a difference. And I need your all, everyone's help to get it into the hands where it can make a difference and give these kids a, a get them on the front of the wave so that they can be successful and get a head start in life. You know, that's that's interesting and how important that that 
as a as a holiday gift or as a birthday gift we'll give we'll give a toy or we'll give something that uh will in a year or less uh not not be worth anything or they might not care about it but to give something that they can use the rest of their lives how special is that well and and the way it was created was not to bore them and not to make them feel like they have to sit down and learn something. It's actually fun and humorous and the teens love it. And we have some videos that uh, testimonials and um, instructions on how to play on the on the Pay Your Family First website. I mean that's the part. The greatest gift for me is not that we've received all kinds of national awards on the board game Thrive Time for Teens. The gift to me is when I see a group of teens play it and they they they're laughing and they're standing up and you know they're saying, "Oh my my mom needs to read this or play this. My dad <laughs> needs to play this. Or they'll say, I'm never going to get in a credit card debt. You know, that's when you know you've got, um, you've made a difference in a child's life. And there is nothing better than seeing those sparks open their eyes and they, they get it. <laughs> you know, actually, uh, you just mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago, thinking uh, three feet from gold. And so, we didn't get to talk much about that, and we just have a couple minutes left. Was there any more that you'd like to say about that? Because I, I like the idea of that book as well. Well, that was my first uh, project working hand-in-hand hand with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, and they called me in March of 2008 and asked me to step into that project. And it was really wonderful. We we met, we met talked to so many incredible people, and the story really takes the principles of perseverance and never giving up. We talked to 35 of today's top leaders in every walk of life, not just business. And we talked to them not about just their success stories, but about those deep, dark moments and how they kept right. going and how they persevered persevered and got through the tough times and their wisdom is just incredible and i think that's the beauty of thinking grow rich that's the beauty of three feet from gold and certainly the beauty of outwitting the devil napoleon hill is not telling us what to do he did his research he spent his life talking to successful people and to thousands of people who were not successful and what he shares with us in these incredible manuscripts is the the synthesis of his life's work this is the advice from all of the successful people he interviewed during his time. This is These are the advice of how to get through the tough times from hundreds and thousands of people who made it. So when you're reading it, it's not just one guru telling you their opinion. It is a synthesis of success and a synthesis of how to get through the tough times and how to get negativity out of your life. And, and there's a thread that runs through each one of them, right? Absolutely. And the thread is, is really speaks to the individual. I mean, I, I cannot tell you with both three feet from gold and outwitting the devil, the, the response I get is, Sharon, I feel like you wrote the book just for me. <laughs> and, there, and there's no better testimonial than that. Because when we talk about now outwitting the devil, Napoleon Hill talks about the importance of experiential learning and that we should stop trying to get our kids to memorize things and pound information into their head, but allow them to become problem solvers and be creative. So when you write a book, it's very important that you not write a book that's lecturing. You want to write a book that's sharing so that you're speaking to someone's heart as well as their minds. And that's how you engage a reader in the book. So anybody out there writing a book, think about um, as you write, is it like you're talking to the reader as opposed to lecturing the reader? Well, I am glad that people feel like you wrote the book for them, but of course, we all know that you wrote it for me, and I am very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you know, I've been giving the uh, I've been giving the s lecture uh, dot com uh, website, but Sharon Lecter dot com works just as well, right? Absolutely, and in fact, Philippa, we also have, and we've got we, way too many websites that they all end up getting you where you want to go, but there is a special website that's outwittingthedevil.com, and it was made just for the book, and at that site, you can link into Amazon or Barnes & Noble to purchase the book, but more importantly on that website is the secret chapter. There was actually a chapter that was written in the manuscript by Napoleon Hill that we pulled out, so it didn't make it into the published book. Um, because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a slightly side story. It's kind of a short story all into itself. And so we've made that available for free and for download on outwittingthedevil.com to your listeners. Oh, wow. That's great. Well, thank you for mentioning that. I like it. I like it. Well, Sharon, this, is, this has been delightful. Oh, it's been my pleasure and my honor. And I truly, you know, the proceeds from this book um, 
in large part go to the Napoleon Hill Foundation and furtherance of the work that they're doing in bringing words of entrepreneurship and personal financial responsibility to the people who need it most. And so um, if you have the opportunity to buy the book, get one for people that you care about, that you love, that you feel are stuck in life, because the proceeds will go to support so many more people. So you're, you're, you're benefiting more than yourself and more than the person you're giving the gift to. So... Please and help us spread the word. And yet another example of how Sharon cares. So, Sharon, thank you for caring, and thank you for being on Life Changes with us tonight. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I enjoyed it immensely and would love to be back. I can't wait for us to connect again. I look forward to it very soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. We'll be back with our producer, Sag with Mark Lejeur, right after this. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. And we're back. We've been uh, talking to Sharon Lecter, and and she's been helping us outwit our devil, no matter what that devil is. And if you want to outwit your devil, you can go to SharonLecter.com, or you can go to OutwittingTheDevil.com, where you can also get the secret chapter. Uh, Mark, did you take all that down, and are your all, all your devils outwitted now? Uh, I, I did take all that down, but I've been trying to... Re- figure out how I can rewrite my bio so I could have 10 or 11 descriptives up by my name as well. Isn't, isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. And, and that's, it, it, you know, and she could actually, you know, make a whole nother paragraph of all that she is. Right. And, 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 and isn't that great showing up that way? Well, showing up that way and showing up that way in totality with an emphasis towards children, I, I think is so powerful mm. to bring, everything she does to bring the knowledge that that is was napoleon hill and and that body of work to 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 retranslate that or revision it um for today's world all those things are so fantastic and and really you know to bring these tools to to kids from multiple perspectives in a fun way and an engaging way uh you know it's, it's it's something that's really underserved yeah, you know, I was just thinking about that when, like, when I first read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it's the first time I became aware of her. And, and to think way back then, it's like, wow, to, to be able to talk to this person, you know, and, and, and get her wisdom and, and I'm getting to read what she's sharing here and how she's sharing it. And, and now to think at the age that I was reading it, to think that children can get this information from her and, and from all the people that she has aggregated and that Napoleon Hill aggregated and all that, that children can get this at a young age. It's powerful. Well, yeah, think about how powerful this is for a moment. You know, it, it, it completely changes your whole frame of reference if you were told just or, or shown just a slightly different perspective. Mm. Because whenever we, as children, did something wrong, we were told that we did something wrong or that we were just in a bad mood or it's just a phase or whatever the case may be, right? Mm. It was all us, meaning our our self. If you give that child the opportunity to look at themselves kind of from that two wolves perspective, you know, the, the two, the duality and, and those personalities and to start looking at that shadow side, you know, that, that we all have and, and, and in, in a subtle yet a fun way to be able to infuse them the, the recognition of that within themselves without making it a bad thing. Right. But, but then, 
also disassociating themselves from that because so much guilt and shame and other things become part of their programming, part of our programming as we grow up when things happen. And then what have we had to do? We've had to learn and read and reprogram to accept that shadow side and to respect our totality and then now to learn how to outwit it, right? So that's kind of this interesting circle of, 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 of uh, learning that we can kind of circumvent by bringing this information in, in, in the way that Sharon is and, and the way thing that uh, you guys were discussing tonight. Oh, that's interesting. And, and you know, uh, definitely the shadow side when you're talking about outwitting the devil, but also the ignorant side, which, which could be a devil in itself. You know, ignorance could be a devil. Um, uh, so, so, so the ignorance, um, yeah. Yeah, oh. you got me thinking. <laughs> uh oh. If I had a bell, I'd ring it. <laughs> Uh, but that that is you know the, the the shadow the duality. I kept referring to that word devil, and and for some reason I, I kept thinking about that and and Diablo and dual, you know, duplicitous. The, the, this whole dichotomy of 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 our existence and 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 that, that you know again I use that word the shadow self, but all of those things that that are encompassed in that word devil that that people try to define and and the way that. Uh, that uh, Sharon was speaking of it, and 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 how again the these some of these tools are being brought to to people at such a young age. I think it's so powerful. You know, actually, uh, you're tuning in uh, to Sharon because you you weren't at the lecture that I got to hear her recently. But she actually she not only talks about that, she gives a visual, and it's a visual that we're all familiar with. She says, "On what side is your angel?" And uh, uh, through I cartoons was about that. Oh, you were. See how funny. Yeah, I was thinking about that before we went on break. I, the, those cartoons, the do it, don't do it, do it. You know, right? That's exact. You're you're so tuning in. I'm so proud of you. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, seriously. So she said, on what side is your angel? On what side is your devil? Okay, now brush that devil off, right? So um, it was it was a cute visual, and and I'm sure it worked. And so you hear that voice, brush it off, just brush it off. So. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you You're tuning thinking in? I'm tuning in, so we uh, we're, we're we're onto something, I think. <laughs> well, if if um, you know, that isn't that one of the if you can recognize a problem? What do they say? You're halfway there to solving it, and and to actually put a label on it is it, 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 saying, well, that's that's my devil talking, or or that's you know, as opposed to. You know, as opposed to necessarily making it bad or making it wrong or just making, you know, by putting the word devil, which can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. But but to me, since I haven't used it in a long time, when she was saying uh, devil uh, during the lecture, I was thinking, you know, the devil is like the monkey mind or the, you know, the insanity that goes on in our head that we try and quiet during meditation or something. So that's what it kind of meant to me at the time. And... um when I was listening to her and, and so to, to just brush that off, brush it aside, it, you know, she didn't say it's, you know, you're bad, go away. Or, you know, it just brush it off. Just it kind, of, kind of, you reminded me of the, sir, please step aside. Uh, where, where is that? The where's the beef commercial <laughs> from way back at when getting, right. getting hard, getting to the, to the meat, getting to the heart of it, you know, getting right thoughts. This doesn't serve me anymore, and 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 kind of like the the principles, the definitiveness of purpose. I, I I like that when she was describing with us to us how you know our life zigzags, and I was saying, well, then what's the purpose? And she said, well, if you have a if you have a definitiveness of purpose, then you zigzag on the way there. And 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 I love the analogy of of the sailboat because we've been sailing right. At, you never go straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a great analogy. I've I've used that myself, and I grew up giving sailing lessons. So it's such it's so apropos, it's, and it and it's so much about life. There is a purposeful destination, but you have to take a very appropriate tack, you know, a very appropriate uh, uh, um, approach to how you're going to get there. Well, I thought it was very appropriate to have Sharon on the show today to talk about outwitting the devil. And I, uh, speaking about devils, I, I hope he's not listening to the show. But we, we've got we've got Adam Carolla on next Monday night. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so I can't wait to have that conversation and and see what we can outwit there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But this was a lot of fun. Uh, Mark, thanks for your comments and for tuning in. And thank you all for tuning in. On behalf of Dorothy Lee Donahue, our producer, and Mark Legere, our producer, and Seth Hendricks, our engineer, I am Filippo Voltaggio. We all thank you for being part of the show, being part of the changes we all wish to see in the world. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change the world.